Okay, so this is the one. <laughs> the one, the one. No one. more radio, no, no radio. more audio. <laughs> the real thing. Yes, sir. The one we've been waiting for. The one we've been waiting <laughs> for. So, if you'd like to introduce yourself, dear sir. My name is uh, Baba Tunde Ajayi, the master genius, <laughs> the extraordinary, the entrepreneur. The standout, the philosopher, <laughs> the, the philosopher, the mentor, the trainer and manager, or the manager and trainer. Let me put that in the right order. Why? The, I just believe that you know trainers don't get enough respect, and I, I hope to change that. You know, I think trainers should talk more. You know, and don't stand in the background because even on my Instagram page. On stamina for soul, not my personal one, Tunde J9, Plum Bear, but my person on the business one, stamina for soul. The heading is no such thing as bad student, only bad teacher. So if that is the case, which it is, then teachers, trainers need to put themselves out there, and realize that it's not a one-man show. You know, uh, but I just think that it's wrong that you hear more about the manager than you do the trainer. When the trainer is the one who's with the fighter every single day, the trainer is the one who feels all the emotions of the fighter, and so does the fighter feel the emotions of the trainer. So the trainer is pivotal in a fighter's uh, uh, progress or degress. <laughs> because when the fighter wins, it's rosy when the fighter Loses. does the opposite to I don't even like to use that other word. But when the fighter does the opposite of winning, the trainer gets the, the, the flak. The, the flak. So I just feel that if you're gonna if you're gonna give someone credit when it, things are up, uh, then you should then and just when it's down, you should also give it when it's up. Balance. Vice versa. There has to be a balance. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I won't let nobody mention Anthony Young. Not in front of me. You can't mention Anthony Yard and not mention Tunde Ajay. Because I take that person. Because <laughs> for me and Anthony, oh, as I've said, we're one who started it from the. Eh, you see what's going on? Food is coming as a rag. <laughs> we're not going to eat it before, but it's here. <laughs> I mean, look at that food. Let me, see that. Let me see the food, man. <laughs> Let me see that food. You want to talk me through it? This is gel of rice. This is effort with fish. Effort is spinning. So this is, we're ready. <laughs> this is food, I can't wait. So let's, let's get this interview over because my food is waiting for me. <laughs> okay. So, I understand. Yes. First of all, world number one. Amazing. Truly amazing. And um, things happen for a reason. You know, we're, we're not there because of abracadabra. We're not there because, you know, uh, we don't deserve to be there. Uh, what I would say is that um, it has it's been meteoric, and um, uh, we're just happy. But we're not being, you know, you can't. It's not a case of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a case of we're number one in the world now. Planted. Yeah, yeah. Planted. This is Friday. This is Friday. Am. Yes, get it right. This is Friday. Am. Which you. <laughs> this is all for me. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know that. <laughs> so yeah, so the number one ranking is good. Uh, it may seem to flatter in a, a lot of eyes, um, but it's like I said from the very start. Our aim is to be the best. Our aim is to be pound for pound, pay per view stars, and uh, we're we're on course. You know, many people are saying, how can you be rate, rate, rank number one in Britain? Ranked number one in the world when you haven't fought for a British title and you haven't fought for um, a world title. But it's like I say, you need to go and check the rules. Every month, a committee sit, a rankings committee, and they weigh up the opponents. They look at, you know, they look at various things mm -hmm. and they rank their facts. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Yes. I we all know the WBO, well we don't all know, but most people would say the WBO and Frank Warren have got a very good relationship. Yes. What's the point where it's called the Warren Boxing Organisation? It's a common <laughs> joke. <laughs> Is that what it's saying? Yeah, the oh. Warren Boxing Organisation. And so, do you feel that that, is that fair? Because obviously you, you are 
you know, Warren Fighter or Anthony Yards a Warren Fighter. So, you know, Warren Fighter, WBO, ranked number one. Well, obviously, something's gone on there. That's what the guy on the outside is looking. I'm just... Re well, like I always say, the guy on the outside has a limited view of boxing. What the guy on the outside sees and hears and reads is other people's perceptions. And uh, oftentimes, the general boxing fan doesn't realize the whole mechanism of the sport of boxing. Now, whether the WBO is known as Warren's boxing organization, or whatever it is you call it, Frank Warren can't fight for them. <laughs> Let me just get that right. Frank Warren can't get in the ring and take the blows. And he can't give the blows. So let's just say, for argument's sake, it is Frank's organization. Yep. Just say for argument's sake, you know, yeah. you, you gotta play devil's advocate. Frank can't make us beat anybody. Frank doesn't have that kind of, and no one has that power. Because when all said and done, the fighter has to get in the ring and fight and become a world champion on his own, not of all. On the, it, it appears that he's on his own, you know, he's got a team and we're all here with the fighter and we all have put in work to make the fight. But the fighter has to do that. So it, and that is akin to a rich father sending his son to Cambridge or Oxford. He gave him that opportunity. But does that mean he's going to pass? Does that mean he's going to pass the exam? He doesn't. Tell me the father out there who has money that doesn't want the best for his child. But, but tell me, can that child do what's not inside of him? He can't. That's the answer. So, so the answer, I, I would, the question I would ask you, has Anthony Yard got what inside of him? Has he got it inside of him? Well, that's what we're about to find out. <laughs> we're about to find it. If you don't know as a trainer, then we're about to find out. Well, I told everybody, I told everybody, go back and watch the tapes. Uh -huh. Go back and watch the tapes. I told everybody from the beginning, live on BT Sports, that Anthony Yard, I can't wait for the whole of the UK, the world of boxing, to see what this kid is about. And you don't like me using that word, kid, so I just have to just say that. But, but I said it from the start. So this isn't a case where someone just popped up all of a sudden. He's number one in the ratings and then we're talking about him. Go back and watch Anthony Yard's professional debut. Go and watch my interview. Go and watch my interviews on YouTube prior to Anthony turning professional. However, that's all well and good. Uh -huh. Remember there was a certain father and son that said, one guy said, this, this father said, um, I built him too good. This guy is going to go and become better than Mayweather. This guy is, uh, you know, and he all kind of backfired. So we, we've seen, we've seen, and I'm only, again, I'm playing the devil advocate here. Yes. Sunday. Yes. I mean, I don't matter what devil advocate. Okay. You just have an opinion. Okay. All right. <laughs> I get that. Fine. I'll, okay. Then I'll, just, then I'll sit on the fence at the moment. I have an opinion, but my opinion is, my opinion. I, I put that to one side. You don't need to be a devil. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would we'll agree on that one. Yes, sir. Okay. So, you know, people want to know, obviously, how good Anthony is. Well, first is, I'm not consumers. <laughs> <laughs> Andy and consumers. I'm not consumers senior, and Anthony is not consumers junior. But we've had it before. We've listen. listen we've listen, been built up. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Just because things never went the way Chris Eubanks Jr. and Cena wanted it to go, does that mean they don't have the right to believe in themselves oh. and have confidence in themselves? Why is it that every time an individual talks confidently, that people want to be the first to shoot them down? Why not take a positive outlook and say, you know what? He's a young kid, his dad believes in him. 
Only time can tell. But people want to see, they want to see what they put, they, they're paying to see a man fight, they want to see if the man can fight or not. They don't want to be dragged along uh, four or five years in respect to certain fighters. They don't yes. want that. They want to see, I want to see what, where my money's going. I'm pay, booking for a hotel so to come sit down and fight. So, so did Uncle Shubham's fight? He fought, but he lost. <laughs> if, wait, and, and then look at all those people afterwards went to the arena to go and see him fight and then they yes. got disappointed afterwards yes so people feel a bit sour about it after after the father well, they back the father and said the father was a great fighter so they, the illusion is the son will be just as good yes but it's clear he obviously wasn't as good as his father yes he's only young time he's still got time with his hands i just feel that what is wrong with being confident you cannot in this sport let me tell yeah. you something my son's a footballer. Yep. He's at Crystal Palace. Yep. You know, football, people say boxing is hard, but football, to me, is the hardest sport. Not in terms of the physicality, because we know that the fundamental cause of boxing is to render your opponent unconscious. Yep. That's not the case in football. But the numbers, the reason why football is the biggest sport in the world is because of the numbers. It is so hard to become a top footballer, um, and, and the same is it's the same goes for boxing. But you have to have confidence. If he never spoke with confidence, or his father never spoke with confidence, and he lost, then it would just be a person who lost. But this is what boxing is about. You have to. I spent almost six years around Floyd Mayweather, so I'm privy to the kind of things. And the kind of things I was hearing, I, rem I remember, I'm, I'm just saying, people who's around Floyd talking negatively about him. But did that mean anything? No, I remember being in a car, we was taking Floyd to the casino uh, in, 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 uh, in near Hyde Park corner, and the driver was saying, that Floyd Mayweather was gonna lose all his money. See, and this is somebody that was with Floyd, but it's a, it's just a commonality of life. People always gonna doubt you, but it's like I say, it's not about what people think, it's about what you think. And if a young man and his father believe that they're gonna be better than Floyd Mayweather, it's a massive statement. Don't see, get that, me wrong. see, it's a massive it's statement. A massive statement. And, 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 it's a massive statement and the problem is with that statement is that Floyd is an all-time great. We're not yep. going to doubt that, right? Yes. It's an all-time great. So for this, up, literally, this young person to come up and yes. to say he's going to be better than Floyd Mayweather, that, that is, that's a huge statement. A huge well, statement. Well, it is a huge statement. I'm not saying he's wrong for making it necessarily. What I would say is that if you're going to make a statement like that, you have to be ready for the shots that's going to come when you don't fulfill what you've said. And, you know, he's, they've obviously got broad shoulders. They believed in themselves. The dad, you know, put confidence in the young man and, and, they, and they thought they, you know, they would achieve it. Obviously, it hasn't worked out the way they are. But I'm, I'm never going to say nothing bad about it because... It's not about saying something bad, but yeah. what it is, it's, and it's not even picking them out. It's just... You watch the sport for such a long time. You gotta put shoe on the yam. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put shoe on the yam and then you eat it. What is it? That's the sauce. It's the sauce. Is this no tomato ketchup or? <laughs> this ain't no tomato ketchup. This is blended peppers. Yes. Oils. You know yam look nice, you know. I'm telling you. That yam look nice. I'm telling you. But anyway, let's go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's not, it's not. It's not pointing fingers at Eubanks, but it's just people will think, okay, are we going to get a Eubank situation or are we going to get a real tree? That's what people want to know. I think that's the frustration. Well, give us a taste. Give us a little, give us a little taste. Everything is time. Of course. You know everything is time. I understand that. You can't put Eubanks and Anthony Yard in the same kind of category. But it had similar amateur backgrounds. No, they never. Eubank had very few amateur no, backgrounds. Okay. Eubanks was an amateur in Las Vegas. Eubanks trained out of the Mayweather gym and he trained with Floyd Mayweather Sr. And he was going around gyms in Vegas. When I went to Vegas, they knew, they know um, Chris Eubanks Jr. 
So, so again, it's not the same. Not only that, your father is a legend in British boxing. Your father was a world champion. Your father had two or three of the greatest British fights ever. You're not the same as Anthony Young. You're not the same as Tunde Ajani. We've done something that has never been done. And I'm just being honest. Because you're dealing with a, I've never looked at myself as obscure, but a trainer that maybe nobody knew. In England, I was known. And I'll be honest with you, even in America, they knew me because such is life now, social media, people watch your tapes and you know, people see you, you know, Coach Rick knew about that, me, right. knew about me and was talking about me long time. Mythology. Coach Rick, Barry Robinson, yes. when he saw me, he said, you guys don't know what you're looking at. Years ago. So the thing is, is that I've been known in America. I knew about your pad work before yes. I knew you. There you go, because I'm the one who started it over here. And that's just the truth. That's not boasting or bragging. That's what Don Charles was saying. Yeah, to, to the guy, the tad work. That's what I'm known for. But you see, the difference between me, I have produced and are producing the fighters to go with the fight. It's not a show. And if you look on YouTube today, if you go in the gyms today, in this country, what kind of pad work are they doing? And there's a reason for that. And I took all the bows and arrows over the years, over the past 20 years. I took all the mockery in the gym, all the vilifying, all the, that rubbish don't work. Well, guess what? That rubbish has got a fighter with 12 amateur fights to the number one position in the world. So, facts don't lie. Okay, let's talk about the fact that you and Anthony are going to America. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I saw it on your Instagram. It was yes, quite nice. Yes, and uh, I don't know if you're aware that uh, Bivol did a live interview on BWTN Sports. Oh, wow. And okay. on the interview, I said, um, how many people do you know from the UK? He says, I know the one with big muscles, Anthony Yard. <laughs> That's fantastic. I said, do you know anybody else? He said, no. Just the big man with muscles, Anthony Yard. He's big man with muscles and powerful. He said that live on our channel. There you go. And, you know, boxing is a funny sport. Mr. Bibble might see us somewhere down the line. <laughs> so don't worry about no big muscles. Boxing is... He's, a, he's already a champion. I think WBA champion. Yeah. I, I haven't even watched him fight. I'm pretty just, pretty again, impressive. But I know his, I know his resume because yes. I study boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and when I say I studied boxing, years ago there wasn't, you couldn't look at YouTube. So you had to be more studious. You know, uh, word of mouth, uh, reading fight reports. And uh, it's something I do, I've done, you know, and I, and I know Bivol's amateur record. Yes, sir, that's good. You can put it here. You just put it here. Yeah. You look food have come. Cheese. That Jeez. looks serious. That's the chicken and the stuff. That might be your one. That's yours. That's yours. The salad. The salad and the planting and the jello rice. That belongs to Him. your son. Uh -huh. And that's your chicken, so you're waiting for your rice. Alright. Damn, that's nice. America. Yes. Okay. yes. It's great. Well, you know, listen, I've got a very old school mindset, which may be the reason why a lot of people don't understand what I'm doing. Because um, I studied the, the master trainers, the legendary trainers. You know, the. The Bowie Fishers. The Emmanuel Schuetz. And um, my study of boxing told me that the old fighters. And the old trainers, they used to go and watch their their opponents when they were just about to fight. Yes. You know, they used to go and it was kind of like a scouting mission. Yeah, yeah. You know, because again, TV can be very misleading. TV can make you look massive, can give you bigger muscles than what you think a man's actually got. It can actually make you look faster than what you are. It can actually make you look like you punch harder than you actually punch. So. I'm under no illusion 
you know, we're here now. We're number one. Again, it doesn't mean we're gonna fight Kovalev or Bivol in our next fight. It doesn't. But what, what it does mean is that I have an opportunity. I found Frank Warren straight away. What? Apparently, these rankings came out last week or the week up, but because I'm, I, I only think about and only focus on Anthony Yard and what's in front of me, I had no idea. You know I've got a big mouth. Yeah. So if I knew about this ranking before, it would have been over social media before. <laughs> so, literally, I heard about the WBO number one ranking. What's today today? Today is Wednesday. So yeah. Monday, I met Frank Warren. Monday. In that meeting with Frank Warren, Frank Warren, I'm there trying to argue certain points. And Frank went, you're number one now. I said, we're not number one, we're number two. He's like, Tun, you're number one now. <coughs> I said, well, as soon as I heard you were number one, I got on the social media and stuff, yeah. started posting and everything. So that was Tuesday. Tuesday. No, Monday night, yeah, Monday night, I phoned Frank Warren. Salad. Salad, yeah. That's it. Just put, just put everything on the table. It's okay. Yeah, Monday, Monday, Monday night, I phoned Frank Warren. I said, Frank, please, can you sort our tickets ringside? Me and Anthony are going there. And Frank was like, wow, like, of course, to, you know, listen, anything you want, I sorted that out. So I booked the flights, booked the hotel. Abracadabra. We'll be ringside Saturday night. Hard Rock. Casino. Casino and Hotel. Atlantic City. New Jersey. Watching our potential opponents. And this is how you do it. So for anybody who thinks that Tunde Jai is just some smoke in there, some blowing smoke up. I'm a student. I'm a student. And so is Anthony. And I just, I'm happy that we're going to see guys that we could put because all four of them could be potential opponents you got Alvarez fighting Kovalev yes and you got um, Chilemba fighting yes. Bivol yeah so these are all guys that potentially we can fight you know and again I have to make it clear I'm optimistic meaning I'm very confident of the future but I'm also a realist and a realist deals with reality and what's in front of me. I'm not saying that we're gonna be fighting for a world title in our next fight, but what I am saying is that this is where we're looking. We're only looking forward, we're not looking backwards. You know, and uh, just like how we got here, it will be intelligent, carefully structured plan. Yes, sir. I watched you with Anthony up close today. For the first time, it's obviously. Special, right? Very special. Um, it was like two guys producing an album, and each song, if one note was off key, if one punch was off key, it was like, no, no, do that again until you got it right. Yes. And then I saw gears, and you probably didn't show all your gears there, but I saw gears. Levels. Myself and Adam. People, sorry, people think I'm joking. When I said on fire height, so I don't know if I'm meant to say that. You can. I you know, that. you know, I once did some work with fire height. Okay. Yeah, that's why. I, that's how I got started. Oh, fantastic. Shout out to fire height. Shout out to fire height UK owners. You know them, man. There. <laughs> yeah. So um, I said it on fire height. The biggest fight is Anthony Yard and Tunde Jai on the pants. That's what I said. And I'm, today, we you got, witnessed it. I've got plenty of footage of it. You witnessed it. Myself, I want to get him right. Anthony Yard, he wants to get him right. He's a perfectionist. He's a perfectionist. Oh. Guess what? Don't say Anthony is a perfectionist. I'm not say saying I'm not there. Yeah, perfectionist. You're both perfectionists. Because. Of course. I'm the teacher. I'm the teacher. I created a system. And uh, Anthony's the golden child of that system, but I don't have an old mindset where the teacher is always right. That's totally wrong. Do you know what I found the most refreshing thing watching you two guys train, or you, Anthony, and Ade train? Yes. There was no screw face. Not at all. No screw face. We're here to learn. Yeah, but there was no screw face. 
do that now. Get out of there, Roy. There was none of that screw face stuff. Like, it means, like, in most gyms, yes. most gyms up and down the country, if you ain't got a screw face and you're cussing at your, 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 your fighter and telling him how he's doing everything wrong, then you're not a good trainer. Oh, he's a real good disciplinarian. It's like I said, this is a partnership. It's not a dictatorship. <laughs> this is not the world war. Yes, sir. No, sir. It ain't, don't work like that. Myself and Anthony and Ade, we don't work like that. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody has a role. And everybody has advice. One must humble themselves enough to realise that they don't know everything. We don't know everything. Everybody has the capability to learn. And that's the mindset we all carry into the gym every day. I mean, today I came in and I said, I don't know what, there's something I want to try. And I was like, all right, the camera's there today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And then the acne will come in. And Andy were like, unks, unks, no, trust me. I'm telling you, let's do it this way. And I'm like, first of all, I'm like, and that ain't gonna work. And then Andy reminds me of what I always tell him, which is anything can work. It's just that sometimes a person ain't done it yet. Yeah. So I have to humble myself. And you know, one of my favorite sayings, which Andy loves, is remind, for reminding is good. You, and Andy reminds me constantly of the things that I taught him. And then I remind Anthony constantly of the things that he taught me. Right. So I'm a student teacher. Yeah. And Anthony is a student teacher. Yeah. It's deep. You know, and I love it. Now, me and Anthony, we have a lot of fun in the gym. Yeah. But you know, the closer the fight gets, and especially on fight night, there's liars in the camp. Liars! Turn up, show up, blow up. If you stand in our way, you're getting eaten. Okay. That's just our mentality. I have to follow up with this thing. Yes. Frank Warren made a statement. By the end of the year, you're getting in with a major title fight. Did he say major? Was that his word? Major. I don't think it's a major title fight. Okay, maybe he said a title fight. No. Well, I'm sure it's a major title fight because... I'll go back and watch the tape. Yeah, I'm sure it's major. Like, well, I must be very careful. Well, major can be British title. Of course. That's, that's major. But I'm not suggesting, I'm not implying. One, I'm of, just... the, one of the main reasons why me and Frank get on, yep. and I've had a good relationship over the years, yep. is because I don't second guess his performance skills. How can I second guess a man who's been doing the same job for 40 years? Who has produced more legendary, listen to what I just said, more legendary British fighters than any British promoter. To a certain degree, because it's not no blind man walking business or blind man leading the blind, I have to respect and trust, I think trust is the, is the key word what he's got planned without saying every second what are you going to do Frank? what are you going to do Frank? what are you going to do Frank? I'm doing my job managing, training Anthony's doing his job fighting, managing, training because Anthony fights with me he fights with them he manages me yeah. <laughs> you understand? and he trains me so me and Anthony actually what does Frank, what does Frank think of, of, of Anthony? I, I listen man it's like I said from the beginning. Frank didn't know Andy. But Frank said, if you're saying this boy is as good as what you're saying, then let's get him up to the office, let's do this thing, and let's build it. Obviously, Andy never had no amateur. We don't have no amateur. So again, credit has to be given to Frank Warren. Because he put somebody who was unknown. Obviously, people have heard about him on the amateurs. But remember, Andy never won a major elite amateur title. He won a novice title. Yeah. And Frank listened to what I had to say and in only his eight fight put him on the Coleno Alvarez Leo Smith undercard. Frank's got a lot of fighters in his stadium, but he put Andy in. So that's saying something.
you do, do you think any time that Frank would like get in, get impatient, or do you think he's just playing the long game, Anthony? Or does he understand? What well, is it with that? Frank knows boxing. Of course he does. If it was a smash and grab, Frank would have agreed to Batavia. He would have agreed to book, um, to Commodore. But Frank realises, probably before me, that Anthony's still a work in progress. You know, uh, and this ain't gonna be a thing where, oh, we end up on the canvas and bloody face and we say, oh yeah, he was inexperienced. No, when we make that step, we will be right and we will all be in one accord as a team that it's the right fight for us in the right time. And, and Frank knows, you can't rush me. No one ain't rushing me. This ain't, and I say it, this ain't no Isaac Chamberlain situation where you put a young man, I've known Isaac since he was a youth, since he came into boxing. Isaac came to his first professional contest sitting down at ringside watching my fighter, Akash Bhatia, fight another kid. I've sparred with Isaac, when Isaac, before Isaac turned pro, before Isaac went to the Lynn Amateur Club. And even when he was a young boy, he had more heart than anything. So I knew it was never a case where Isaac will say, I'm not gonna fight. But this is why you got a manager. This is why a person that manages you has to have your best interests at heart. So now, you go and put a guy who like Anthony didn't have the amateur background, didn't have the GB backing, didn't have none of that, and you put him in against an Olympian, live on Sky Sports, in his... Uh, one guy's had seven fights, one guy's had ten fights. Embryonic stage of a career. I think... I don't even think Isaac's 24 years old. Yet. I don't even think he's 25 years old. Yet. So what you have is you put in a novice in who's been boxing on small world shows. All of a sudden, you've put him in a massive environment. You've built the show so big that it's sold out the O2 arena. And what is it a case of? It looks like his rabbit in headlights. People start criticizing Isaac. Oh, he came there and it looks like his arsehole when he never threw no uh, punches uh, and um, and the fight was rubbish to watch. Well, guess what? He didn't allow the, you didn't give the guy time to grow and develop and get used to the occasion and fighting on big occasions with the world watching you. Well, there's three situations that happen there. There's that. There's the Ahara Davis situation with Josh Taylor. And we have also uh, just uh, uh, Lawrence Acoli with uh, Luke Watkin. Listen, people are where they are for a reason. Lawrence is an Olympian. So he's obviously done something rap. Right? He's done something right. <laughs> he's obviously done something rap. You don't get certain, nothing is given in life. It's certainly not given in boxing. So this is why people have to understand, when you see Anthony Yard is number one in the WBO, it's for a reason. Isaac Chamberlain fought Lawrence Acoli at the wrong time. Now, I'm not saying he would have won the fight. You understand? Yeah. But what I'm saying is that if you had given this young man time to develop his career, then who knows what could have happened. It may have been a better fight than what it was when the fight that we saw. And that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that you ain't pulling that trick on us. It's not gonna happen. This ain't no Eddie Hearn, golden spoon in your mouth or silver spoon in your mouth. Yes, daddy, can I have this? I get what I want. Listen, Eddie, you ain't getting, you might get what you want, but you're not gonna get it when you want it. You're gonna get it when we want it. That's my message to you. <laughs> this ain't no sport brat business. You don't control Tunde Ajayi. And um, I've been employed by Anthony to manage his career. You know, and um, I must be doing something right. We're all talking about Anthony Yard. Bivols knows Anthony Yard. The man in the high street knows Anthony Yard. Anthony Yard is simultaneously on Sky School advert and a BT advert. It's never been done. I'm his manager. 
Anthony is sponsored by Maxi Muscle. He's sponsored by Foot Asylum. I'm his manager. I'm doing something right. It's just a fact. It's not boasting or bragging. If Eddie Hearn or Frank Warren or, the, or I'm not trying to say we're, you know, me and Frank we're yeah. a team, but I'm trying to say as a, from an individual standpoint, anybody else done this, we'll be shouting at the roofs. We'll be supporting them. So why? I don't know. Anyway, I don't even need no support. Come, I'm, I'm a liar. Liar. I'm a liar. I'm the Lion King. Don't worry about that. I'm the Lion King, and um, I'm here to support. Everybody knows the relationship me and Anthony have. It's more than just fight a trainer or go and son, you're fighting next week. It ain't that kind of relationship. It's apparent in all the videos we've got with you. We've got some nice videos with you two together. It's not that kind of relationship. Mm. We, we are, myself and Anthony are one. And um, Anthony always, I laugh because Anthony always says to me that it's not about age, I'm, it's not about age. And I agree with him to a certain extent, you know, because um, the Chinese have a saying, you know, a child with many books in his hand is wiser than, man, than a man who's just got experience, because knowledge is power. And that ain't nothing to do with age. Anthony was interviewed by a 14 year old boy yesterday and I went straight up to the mother and said, this boy is, a, is the new Martin Bashir. I could not believe his grammatical speech. So yes, Anthony's correct in that way, but what Anthony's not correct in is the experience factor. I've seen certain things, so I can guide him and advise him. So again, trust is very important between myself and Anthony. Mm -hmm. Because, and even me, when Anthony says something to me, maybe my ego might say, nah, we ain't going there, Anthony. But then, because I'm a thinker, I'm like, there must be a reason Anthony's saying that. And I trust him, he's his own man, and I roll with him. And Anthony trusts me, even sometimes he has to bite his tongue and say, oh, come on, aunt, man. But I'll say, Ant, relax. This one, I know what's going on. <laughs> you understand? And that's our relationship. And I, that's the reason why we are where we are. It's a trusting relationship. It's a relationship which is gonna be here for a very, listen to me well, a very, very, very long time. And if you're sitting at home, praying that something's gonna happen, you're gonna be wrong. You're gonna be mistakenly wrong. It ain't going like that. And I'm telling everyone, myself and Anthony, we're destined for great things in the sport of boxing. Why? Because I want it. Tundi Ajay. But guess what? Anthony Young wants it. He wants it. And that's all that, that's all that really matters. You know, um, I'm happy. We're happy and uh, I think that shows in our performances in the gym, the way we perform in the gym. And uh, it's definitely showing on fighting. Hmm.